Hey there, this is Math 2 Unit 10. This is our mid unit review. And so we're going to be just going through a lot of stuff that we've already covered in the last uh, five worksheets or five lessons or so and put them all together. So here we go because there's a lot of information here, just needs lots of practice. It says complete the table if needed, plot the points, and sketch the curve for f of x equals x squared. So you can make an x and y table here if you choose. That's just fine. Um, and so in this case here, let's just say that I did a point at negative one, I did a zero and I did a one right there. So if I do a negative one, negative one squared is gonna be one, zero squared is zero, and one squared is one. This tells me a couple things here. I see that it's positive, which tells me this is gonna be curving up in this direction. And I can tell from my table, my vertex is gonna be at zero comma zero. Because it's curving up, it has a minimum value the domain in this case here is gonna be all real values of X are gonna be just fine for our, our domain. And the range is gonna be Y is anything greater than or equal to zero. That axis of symmetry is where, looking at the X value here, is when X equals zero is where things are gonna curve. So if I plot this out, I have zero right there. At negative one, we're here. At positive one, we're there. And so we're curving and doing something along these lines like so. That's the idea. Okay, that's number one. Number two, again, you can make a table if you want. This one is in um, uh, the vertex form. So because it's in vertex form, I can see quickly that my vertex is gonna be at opposite of that is negative one, and then that is a negative four. That's my vertex there. So I can plot that and go negative one and go one, two, three, four, right here. Negative one comma negative four. Because it is a positive value, again, we're gonna be curving up this way. So this is gonna be a minimum, telling me if I sketch this out, I should have something that goes along those lines right there. The domain is gonna be all values of, of X are gonna be fine. The range is gonna be Y will be anything greater than or equal to negative four. And my axis of symmetry is gonna be at X equals negative one. Again, you can use those by looking at the vertex right there. Now, if I want to plot a point out, because I already know that I have at negative one, I'm at negative four, I could pick a point above that or below that. I could do zero and I could do negative two to find out how that's going to curve. Let's just do the zero one because that's zero, not zero, that's easy enough. So two times zero plus one squared minus four. Zero plus one is one, one squared is one, so two minus one is a, two minus four is a negative two. So negative two, negative two for another point. So one, two, and then one, two, right here. All right, and it's gonna look something along these lines, a little bit narrower, right? Because it has that two in front. And that's what we have, something like that. A is three comma 28 a solution to K of X. So the question is, if I plug three in for X, do I get 28? How do you know? Let's see. So we do two times three plus one squared minus four. The question is here, by doing that, can I get 28? Three plus one is four. So two times four squared minus four. Four squared is 16. So two times 16 minus four. Two times 16 is 32 minus four equals 28. So yes, that is a solution for that equation. Compare the graph of two x plus two times x plus one squared minus four to f of x. Which one is wider? So which one is wider is going to be the f of x equals x squared. How do I know it's wider? Because the value of the variable in front, the a value, is one, right? And that is less than a equals two. So the smaller that number, the wider it's going to be. The one and the four change the location of the vertex. What did the one do to the graph? So looking over here, what did the one do to the graph there? In our case, what happened with that one is it shifted uh, left, right? Shifted left one unit is what, that, what the one did. And the four, what did it do? It shifted um, down in our case here, four units, okay? So what's happening with those things? It's gonna be shifting to uh, the left one unit and then shifting to the right one, uh, down four units, and which you can see from the vertex there. So it's moving the left and down. 
Name two other points that are solutions to k of x. Okay, so to find two more points there that are solutions, we could look for when uh, x equals zero. That would be probably the easiest way to do something there. Um, so we can just say when does x equal zero. So we could take this and make it into an equation, right? And we can do two times, or sorry, when y equals zero. Let's do y equals zero. Let's set it equal to zero. Two times x plus one squared minus four. We add four to this side, so four equals two times x plus one squared. Divide by two, so we end up with two equals x plus one squared. Um, and so we can do the square root of two, plus or minus square root of two equals x plus one. So one plus or minus um, root two. So that's gonna be a little bit crazy there. So I'm not really a fan of that one. That didn't work out too nicely. So two other points I could do, I could go back up here and say, well, let's do zero comma negative two, which we already did. And we could do a point at one. This is just getting a little too ugly there, right? So I plug one in, let's do one, plug it back in there. So put one, yeah. So one is one plus one is two, two squared is four. And then four times two is eight, eight minus four is four. So when you put one in, you end up with four. So I, that looks a little bit better to me. Yeah, right, one, two, one times one is two, four, eight, four, yep. So just pick a point, plug one in, you're good to go. Don't worry about it solving like that, that was a little crazy talk. Okay, uh, so you did the following work to find the x-intercepts, and here we go, which we just did a second ago. Conclude there should be one, X intercept at that point right there. The graph shows two X intercepts. I explain what is wrong. Okay. Well, what would be wrong is that when you do a uh, square root of something, you're going to end up with a plus or minus, right? You end up with two things. So when I did it up there a second ago, right, we did zero equals two times X plus one squared minus four. And we end up with four equals two times X plus one squared which divided by two on both sides, gave us two equals x plus one squared. And then we had a root two, plus or minus root two equals x plus one, right? So when you look over here, what's going on is when they're doing their steps, everything is looking good, but when they got here, they forgot the plus or minus right there. And that's, oh, hope I was on the page, sorry. Hope they on, so we had a plus or minus to be right there. That's the biggest issue. So everything else is pretty good, but because they forgot the plus or minus, there should be two solutions, not just one. So that's where the error was made. Okay. All right. So that's the first page of your review. Let's look at the second page. It says complete the table if needed, plot the points, and sketch the curve. All right. So our vertex, it's in vertex form. So we have vertex at three comma two, that's done there. It's a negative value, so we're gonna be curving down. So this is gonna be a maximum at three, two, one, two, three, and up two, that's our maximum value there. Our domain are gonna be all values of x, and our range is gonna be y, it's gonna be anything less than or equal to, what's our height? Two. Okay, that's most of the b, and our axis of symmetry is at x equals three. That's our axis of symmetry, and we're curving down this direction, this direction if I sketch that out like so. All right, now because it is a half value, it's gonna probably be a little bit wider. That's what's gonna happen there. How did changing the a value to negative one half change the shape of the parabola? So because we added that half, it made everything wider compared to, compared to just a one. What are the zeros, x-intercepts of this function? What are the x-intercepts? Okay, to solve that, what are the x-intercepts? We, we work out the, the solution. So we would say, okay, uh, zero equals negative one half times x minus three squared plus two. We do a negative two over here equals one half times x minus three squared. Multiply by both sides by two, so we have a negative four. Negative four, we're doing this okay so far. So a negative four. Oh, sorry, it should be a negative in front here. That's what I'm doing wrong. So I showed a positive four. So positive four uh, equals x minus three squared. And now when I take the square root of both those sides, square root of all this, I end up with the square root of, of four is plus or minus two equals x minus three. 
I'm going to add 3 over here, so I get 3 plus or minus 2 equals x. So I have two problems, 3 plus 2 and 3 minus 2, so I end up with 5 or 2 are the two values for the x-intercepts. So I can have it at 5 comma 0, and I can have also 2 comma 0. Those are my two x-intercepts for this problem here. Is 0 comma 1 a solution to that equation? How do you know? Well, we plug it in and check is one way to figure that out. So we can do a does when x is 0, do you end up with 1 is the question. So let's do it. Negative 1 half times 0 minus 3 squared plus 2. So this becomes a negative 3 squared is 9. So negative 1 half times 9 plus 2. So negative 9 over 2 plus 2. Does that equal, our goal is to get equal to 1? I would say nope, it is not equal to 1. We would say that's not going to work. No. So how does H affect our graph here? How does H? H affects our graph by doing what? That's going to be the H value is a negative 3. Right? That's the H value is right here. That is our horizontal shift. Okay? So that's our horizontal shift. And in this case here, because it's going to be, well, whatever it is, it's going to be a horizontal shift whether we're going to go left or right. The K value affects our vertical shift whether we go up or down. That's the K value, and that is located right up here. So our H value and our K value right there. Number four, graph this one here. So here we have a little graph, and we have 1 fourth X minus 2 squared and minus 4. Our vertex is going to be at where? Opposite of that, 2, add, use that, negative 4. Because it's positive, we're going to be going up. All right, going this way. Is it narrow or wide? Well, it has a 1 fourth, right? Compared to x squared, because 1 fourth, it's going to be wide. Axis of symmetry. We can use this for axis of symmetry. So x equals 2. And then if we want to find our x intercepts and our y intercepts, we've got to plug some values in there to figure that out, right? No problem. Let's first of all plot this real quick. We have 1, 2, and then 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's the point we're looking at there for starting with. And curving up, we're going to get something that goes along these lines, right? So just as kind of a sketch, it'll look something like that. So my x-intercepts, I can probably expect a negative one and a positive one. But let's just take a look and see. To solve this out here, what we do is we can find the x-intercepts by making it equal to 0. So 0 equals 1 fourth x minus 2 squared minus 4. So we add 4 over here. 4 equals 1 fourth x minus 2 squared. Multiply by 4 on both sides to get rid of that. So we have 16 equals x minus 2 squared. Square root of both sides, I get plus or minus 4 equals x minus 2. Add 2 over here, so we end up with 2 plus or minus 4 equals x. Two problems, we either have 2 plus 4 or 2 minus 4 for my x-intercept values. So again, this is where y equals 0. So 2 plus 4 is 6, so that's 1. And 2 minus 4 is negative 2, so that's my other one. So I'm going to have an intercept at 6, is comma 0, and negative 2, comma 0. Now for the y-intercept, that's where x equals 0. So again, I can do the same equation, and I can make it, I can do 1 fourth times 0 minus 2 squared minus 4, and solve that out. This is negative 4, or negative 2 squared is a positive 4. So I have 1 fourth times 4 minus 4. And so 1 fourth times 4 is 1. 1 minus 4 is a negative 3. So my y-intercept is here at negative 3 for that one right there. Let's so take a look at this next one, number 5. Given the graph of f of x is there, graph this person right there on the same grid. Okay, so my vertex tells me I'm going to be at 3 comma 1. So I'm going to go over here to, this is 2, okay, that's 2, interesting, so we're going by 2's. This is 3, then I'm going to go up 1, so I'm going to go really up 2, uh, there we go. So this is the same graph, it's going to look something like this, right? So choose how to go from f of x to g of x, what's happening from there, okay? So what's happening to the x value? The x value is moving to the x plus 3, we're going this way plus 3 from 0 to 3. 
And for the y, what's happening? We're going up one plus one. So where do I see that? I see that right there in choice C. All right, let's look at the next page, which I think is your last page here. Normally I don't do all of this, but because this is a kind of big checkpoint, I wanna make sure you are on the right page with all this stuff. Okay, so let's take a look here. The graph represents f of x, and the table shows some values of another, of another quadratic function. So we have f of x and we have g of x, which is different. Select whether each statement is true or false about the given functions. Okay, the minimum value of f of x is greater than the minimum value of g of x. So minimum value, minimum value, that means a low point. So here's our low point here for f of x is located at about what? What would you say, negative four, comma, negative one, looks like about the minimum value there. So looking over here, what's the lowest point we have? Our lowest point, yeah, looking at the y value, is at negative 25, so they're at one comma negative 25. So there's a minimum value there, minimum? Let's see, yep, because we're continuing, nope, yeah, continue to go down. So minimum value of, of negative four is greater? Yeah, because negative four, is actually greater than negative 25. So that's kind of a little tricky there. Think about it. negative one is greater than negative five, so that's true. The value of x when f of x is minimum is less than the value of g of x when it's as minimum. Well, negative four and one. So negative four is actually less than one. So is this one less than that one? Yes, that's true. Okay, so negative four is less than one. Just like this one is negative one is greater than negative 25, true. Okay, both x-intercepts of g of x occur when x is greater than zero. So x-intercept is gonna be when? When y is equal to zero. So we have six comma zero and negative four comma zero. Are those both greater than zero for a value of x? Nope, that's false. And the axis of symmetry for x of x is x equals one. That means where does this make its bend? Well, our axis of symmetry is right there at negative four. So it's actually at x equals negative four. So this would be false. All right, and then number seven. Here's our graph. Models a path of a rocket's height with respect to time. All right, so here's our rocket's height with respect to time. Awesome. The maximum height of the rocket is at 36 feet. Is that gonna be true? Well. We have to take a look here. This becomes our vertex. Now in this case here, our vertex is at one half comma 36. That is the high point at the vertex. So that is gonna be a true statement 36. The maximum height is two feet. Um, no, we just said the maximum height was 36. So how could that be possible? No. Uh, C, it took two seconds for the rocket to hit the ground. Well, according to the graph, that is gonna be true because it ends up right here at two is when it hits the ground, that's true. The rocket started at an initial height of 30 feet. Looking up here, where does it start at? It starts actually here. There's 30, so it's actually above 30. That would be false. The rocket was increasing in height between time zero and 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 is right there. That's where we can see what's happening and it definitely is increasing in height there from 0 0.5 and it decreases after that. So that's a true statement. And our vertex we said is at one half, all right? One half comma uh, 36. You could also write that as 0 0.5 comma 36. Is it more useful to use the equation or the graph if you want a precise answer? If you want precision, if you want precision, it's more helpful to look at the equation because you can get a more precise answer with the equation by plugging in a value. All right, that is it for this review. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.